What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. Spring check out 10 wrestlers WWE attempted to destroy before they left. Now, it has been documented that when certain wrestlers leave WWE, depending on depending on uh, their you know the back their backstage situation, you know whether you know they you know they were good backstage in the sense of like people liked them or upper management liked them or in a certain situation where maybe man, upper management didn't care for them or aka vince didn't care for them so what they'll usually do is they'll try to, to destroy a wrestler's credibility on screen before they leave the company i don't know why this is a thing but it does happen you know to maybe contracts didn't get renegotiated and you know if a person may end up going somewhere else and you know management may think they go may end up going to like the opposition or another company aka AEW or whatever then they'll do what they can to sometimes not all the time but sometimes just destroy their credibility so we're gonna check out some of these moments where you know it was definitely some pettiness on the booking side of things for these wrestlers before they left to another company or whatever uh it's by wrestlemania appreciate all love and support we're gonna get right into this one man Unfortunately, it's rather common in wrestling companies such as WWE for them to embarrass a wrestler when they're leaving the company. If a wrestler decides to not renew their contract, WWE is prone to bury the wrestler on the way out and completely derail any momentum that particular character had. Additionally, if WWE are getting set to release a wrestler, it's not uncommon for the wrestler to be buried on WWE TV and sometimes they'll even book them in humiliating angles. Uh -huh. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 times WWE attempted to destroy a wrestler's credibility tis, before tis, they tis, left. Man. Unnecessary pettiness, man. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10, Raven. Mm. Upon the debut of the Raven character on WWE television in 2000, fans hoped that WWE would realize just how special the Raven character was. Sadly, he was relegated to the hardcore division with the majority of his run and he was barely involved in any substantial storylines. Yep. When WWE made the decision to cut Raven in 2003, they attempted to completely destroy any ounce of credibility the character had left. This began a few months prior when Raven lost a match to Tommy Dreamer and was consequently banished from Raw. This Damn. relegated Raven to Sunday Night Heat, which was a huge demotion and was WWE's way of telling fans that Raven was not a wrestler they needed to care about. Sheesh. Raven was eventually allowed back on Raw for his final month in the company, but he would only wrestle one time in the show, losing to Jeff Hardy and subsequently being released from WWE. Number 9, That's Eugene. There's an argument to be made that Eugene was humiliated and embarrassed during both of his WWE exits. During the final months of his initial WWE run, Eugene was in essence turned into an enhancement talent and he rarely won. Yeah. This over time seriously hindered his relationship with fans, as Eugene who was wrestling Triple H on pay-per-view was long gone and now Eugene was lucky to get oh an entrance God. on television. Alright. WWE appearance of this run on August 31st, 2007's edition of SmackDown. He would be annihilated by Mark Henry and placed in a bear hug before passing out, writing him off TV in the process. His second run was over before fans even knew it, as Yuji was brought back in 2009, but Vince McMahon didn't like the physical shape he was in. This resulted in him having a match on Raw against the Calgary Kid, who would later be revealed to be The Miz, and was fired <laughs> immediately after in Jeez, humiliating bro. fashion. Number 8, The Revival. Got in January buried. 2019, The Revival requested their W- I was just talking about this, how they, they just misutilized them, bro. Misutilized them. They are tag team gold. And... W, um, well, not even WWE. I mean, well, technically, Vince is WWE. Vince just didn't really see anything special in them, bro. WWE release. This was outright denied for the next 15 months as WWE believed that the revival had zero intention of leaving the company and the duo were threatening to leave so that they could receive a push. In a rare circumstance, this push was granted, yeah. but the revival knew that WWE didn't care about tag team wrestling and they, they simply didn't. wanted out. In their final months of their run in the company, Vince McMahon had an idea which would have destroyed the tag team's credibility forever. 
McMahon personally designed an entirely new gimmick for the team, which was less than flattering. Wow. The duo revealed that both of them burst out laughing when McMahon proposed the new characters, which would have featured the two wearing lipstick and carrying glow sticks. Whoa. They were even set to wear suspenders and a large shatter machine sign on a chain necklace. Thankfully, instead of debuting these awful characters, the duo were pulled off TV until their formal WWE release in 2020. I'm so glad they did not go with this. What? That is purposely trying to bury somebody as they leave. Like, why? Just let, just, just let them leave. You know what I'm saying? How they do what they need to do. Put the other talent over. Don't bury them and call it a day. That's, I'm glad they're doing what they're doing in AEW, bro. Number seven, That's Hulk cringe. Hogan. A following WrestleMania 19 and ah, Hulk Hogan's victory over Vince McMahon, they decided to have Hogan portray the Mr. America character. This was a character that didn't really take off as it wasn't exactly hard to work out that it was Hogan under a disguise. Yeah. Fans just wanted the Hulkster persona back on screen. Yeah, that's... Hogan was incredibly unhappy with WWE creative during this time, and it was no secret that he was planning on leaving the company. It was around this time when WWE began to bury Hogan as much as possible on TV. In a Wrestling Observer Newsletter report from 2003, Meltzer discussed this and this is what he had to say. Hogan was unhappy about how creative was handling the Mr. America character. He'd come off losing to Vince McMahon in the arm wrestling match that didn't seem to serve a purpose, and then yeah. losing to Big Show's chokeslam in the six-man tag, which was to set up show for Zach Gowan and Stephanie McMahon. Number 6. Mickey James Pointless. The months leading up to Mickey James's 2010 release, it was almost as if WWE wanted to embarrass one of their top female stars as much as humanly possible. They would implement a controversial storyline which revolved around James's weight. The storyline went on for months and involved Layla and Michelle McCool constantly belittling James and mocking her. I mean, she, she looked good to me back then. She still looked good now. I don't... Alright. <laughs> Figure. The segments weren't entertaining or even clever, and they did little to generate any genuine heat. The storyline was without question designed to mock James before her eventual release, and over 13 years later, fans still discuss how inappropriate and offensive the storyline was. Yeah, super Number cringe. five, Jeff Jarrett. In super 1999, cringe. Jeff Jarrett decided Pink. to leave WWE <laughs> behind in favor of joining WCW. He would follow former WWE head writer Vince Russo to the company with the hopes of finally being a top guy. Jarrett's departure was controversial as he wasn't under contract at the time of the Walking No Mercy pay per view. With a fucking sink, bro. <laughs> but he was Intercontinental Champion and naturally WWE wanted him to drop the title. Infamously, Jarrett held McMahon up for money and Jarrett was paid $200,000 to complete the match. Damn. In the months before Jarrett's departure, he would be booked in a storyline with China in the Battle of the Sexes angle. This storyline portrayed Jared. 200,000 was definitely a lot back then. So he held him up just for that money, bro. That's crazy. I think we did check out a video talking about his issues with, you know, before he had left WWE. Because I think he was owed some money that he never got. As extremely sexist. And it was obvious that WWE were annihilating his gimmick bro. on the way out. In the No Mercy match against China, the two would compete in a good housekeeping match. A good and in this housekeeping match, Jarrett match, was defeated bro. by China thanks to being hit by the likes of a toilet seat and a literal kitchen sink. Bro, what the fuck? Number four, Lita. Shortly after the and retirement, here's the thing, y'all. We gotta, we gotta call a spade a spade. Back then, there were some cringe matches, cringe segments, cringe characters. It was. Like, even back then, it didn't work. So if you go back and look at some of these old segments, you'd be like, what the fuck? Why was, why was this on television? So you can't just say it started with the PG era. No, there's always been some cringe, eye-roll-inducing stuff on WWE television. It even goes back way to the 80s sometimes. And Trish Stratus, another female legend, decided to hang up her boots. Where Stratus was allowed to go on top, the same couldn't be said for Lita, as a WWE send-off was insulting and a massive disservice to Lita and the fans. Following a loss to Mickey James at the 2006 Survivor Series event, Prime Time would begin to auction off her personal belongings as a yeah, crowd heckled her. This. According to Lita during an interview with That's Chris Van Vliet, she was rather hurt by how WWE handled her departure. That is kind of cool. Like, it just like, hurt my feelings, you know? And, and I, I was very vocal about it. I went to my producer that day. I went to the head writer. I went to Vince. And I went back to my producer. I went back to the writer, back to Vince, being like, is there any way we can not do this? Can we just do this in a pre-tape later? Like, can I just have this match and i remember saying 
all right, well, this is the last time you get to pull my strings, so I guess you're pulling them hard, you know? Um, I'll go out there and I'll do business because I'm a professional, but mm-hmm. um, I want you to know this hurts my feelings. That's kind of fucked up. Number I ain't gonna hold three. you. That definitely is fucked up. Like, I know some people feel some type of way about the whole Lita, Matt, and Edge thing, but she ain't deserve that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, you know, kudos to her for being professional, but yeah, bro, that's, that's, Woo. Wrestling businesses ain't always a sunshine and daisies. The Big Show. For the longest time, it looks set that The Big Show would never leave WWE. However, Facts. in 2021, Big That's Show decided to leave the company. The former WWE champion has spoken at length about how WWE were treating him during his final months in the company. It was clear that WWE believed that Show had zero value as a top star. Big Show was fully aware that WWE weren't going to present him in a substantial manner ever yeah, again. Nah, he was just there According to, put to Big over. Show, he was getting the impression that Vince McMahon wanted to put him into a retirement home, which was frustrating to him as he believed he had so much to offer WWE. One specific segment highlighted Show's frustration, and it was evidence that WWE were yep. destroying Show's character before he left. In a segment with Randy Orton, Orton would berate Show and he would even grab him by his neck. It was a character killing segment that was no doubt designed to embarrass Show and hinder mm-hmm. any credibility he had left as a top star. Mm-hmm. Number two, Bray Wyatt. It's like, come on, bro. This is a big show. Nobody should be grabbing his neck. I don't care if it is Randy Orton. He should be. As soon as someone grabbed his neck, he should be launched into the next room. In the months following Bray Wyatt's WWE oh, release, not get on this. Man had a personal dislike of Wyatt. This would explain how poorly WWE presented Wyatt in his final months in the company, particularly how they booked The Fiend oh character. My gosh. The Fiend was an interesting character, yet the feud with Randy Orton received mixed reviews as the match quality wasn't exactly stellar and The Fiend would never seem to be able to secure a win. Wyatt's final match of his initial run was at WrestleMania 37. Oh, this was awful. He would be defeated by Orton in arguably one of the worst matches on the show. Following the match, there was a distinct lack of desire from fans to see the Fiend character on TV as he simply wasn't credible and you it was know. almost as if this is exactly what McMahon wanted to achieve with his questionable booking decisions. Mm-hmm. And number one, Dean Ambrose. Oh, yeah. In unprecedented fashion, WWE decided to announce that Dean Ambrose would be leaving WWE in 2019 ahead of time. Following this announcement, WWE's presentation of Ambrose was rather bizarre, and it was clear that they were trying to bury him. Yep, they Ambrose definitely would were. enter into a feud with Nia Jax, and WWE weren't even planning on delivering an Ambrose vs. Nia matchup. According to Ambrose, WWE created promise they wouldn't even bury him on the way out, but Ambrose knew exactly what they were doing with the Nia feud. WWE would also book the ultra popular star in matches against the likes of EC3, which he mm-hmm. would lose in two minutes. And it was so transparent what WWE were doing that fans firmly sided with Ambrose. Yeah. And this would have no doubt annoyed McMahon, which often believed that he was smarter than the audience. WWE attempted to humiliate Ambrose on the way out, but it didn't really work. And thankfully, it didn't hinder Ambrose's didn't. popularity heading into his run in AEW. But there you have it, folks. It did not hinder him because he, we saw right through what was happening. And when he went to AEW, he was a mega star for the company, bro. He still is a top guy for them. I may not be a big fan of his matches and the overdoing it on blading, you know, bleeding and, ma- and damn near almost all his matches. But I can respect the fact that he's his own guy over there. He is one of the top guys over there. And the fans love him. So I can't. I can't knock them for it. You know what I'm saying? This was one of the few times they tried to end Dean Ambrose, like try to destroy his character on the way out. And it actually didn't work. It backfired and it made people wanted to see him more. So, hey, that's the silver lining in this situation. But comment down below. Let me know some other wrestlers that ended up getting released or whatnot that you remember getting released and they were just burying them beyond belief man but i appreciate all the love and support you guys are on channel road to 150k and i am still the undisputed youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all in the next one peace